All right, so today is the big day, uh, or the big couple of days. So this week, uh, Mitch came up. Mitch is, as if you've been watching our channel, is interning here now. So he'll be one of the big projects actually that we wanted him to work on was this air system. So both uh, photographing it and video recording it. And he's going to be doing a lot of the work today too, just because there's lots going on on the farm. So I'll be jumping in and out of the scene. And so while we're building it, we'll have a time lapse going on so you guys can kind of see how it all goes together. But I thought that I'd give just a little bit of context. And so Mitch, you're pretty interested in this because you're a climatologist and yep. we're kind of making artificial climates right now, right? Yeah, just air moving around. Super interested in it. Make it do what we want it to do and grow heaps of food. So I've been teaching this online passive solar greenhouse course for a number of years now because it's been a bit of a passion of mine. And the most asked question I get is, can you show me how to build a subterranean heating and cooling system? Also called a climate battery, also client called a GAT. And I think the GAT or GAT is, refers to Geothermal Air Heat Transfer System or something. It's an acronym that uh, Ceres uh, came up with, which is basically describing the exact same system. And inevitably, the answer that I give to people is, I don't know if they work. But, being a mechanical engineer, I will show you how to optimize the airflow through these systems so that if they do work, that you have a high chance of success. Now, the reason that I don't know if they work is because we only have, we have systems in that are anecdotally showing that they've worked, but I've never had the time or the money or the resources to to do the modeling on them. And so for this particular greenhouse, because it was such a big structure, I decided to actually do the thermal dynamic modeling, determine if it was worth spending. I think the, all the pipe that you're looking at here is about three grand, plus we had to put in a pretty substantial foundation. Um, there's gonna be quite a bit of labor that goes into building this thing. And so I wanted to do the modeling on this, the thermal dynamic modeling. And so we use a program called Transys. And Transys models things differently than other uh, thermal dynamic modeling software because it, it it allows you to look at the transient nature of heat transfer. And so a lot of thermal dynamic modeling programs look at a static transfer and so they, they can't... Um, it's essentially, if you're an engineer or into kind of modeling itself, it's basically finite element analysis for heat transfer which means that you take an enormous number of nodes and the nodes are connected to other nodes and based on what one node does in time will dictate what another node does in time. And so because our world is transient, our world is constantly changing in time, uh, it makes sense that you'd have a modeling software that also changes uh, in time. And so that requires an enormous amount of processing power but it also uh, requires a pretty complex mathematical model. And so over the last three months, our greenhouse was stalled in construction because I wanted to take the time to, uh, to model this. Um, and you might ask, why didn't I model it before I built the greenhouse? There's lots of reasons for that. Um, the, the point is, is we stopped the project to model it. <laughs> Anecdotally, last year, and there's gonna be a video coming out on our channel in the not too distant future. It might actually come up before this video. We know that the Hull Services greenhouse in Calgary last year went through multiple weeks at minus 40 and only got to minus 10 inside without fossil fuels. So that's that's pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. Um, and so now we've got the model for this one and, and the model shows that with this system that we just designed, we can get to the middle of January without going below zero. So one of Mitch's projects, once it's installed, is we're actually going to install temperature monitoring sensors in various locations inside and out yep so we're going to measure the outside temperature we're going to measure the inside ambient temperature we're going to measure the intake air the outlet air and then several ground sensors in the actual greenhouse itself to see how the ground changes in temperature over time we're going to see how what the delta t across so the change in temperature across the exchanger mm -hmm. we're build, basically building a giant uh, heat exchanger yeah so we're going to see how much energy the ground absorbs out of the air and actually a lot of these temperature sensors have humidity sensors built into them so we'll actually be able to measure the change in humidity so once we know the change in temperature and the change in humidity because there's a lot of energy stored in the moisture and air mm -hmm. as well Absolutely. we'll be able to calibrate the model that we've now got in transis 
which will make future designs even better. And so there's an iterative process going on here. And as we figure that out, that's eventually going to feed back into our passive solar greenhouse design course. Now, the good news is, is the, is the air exchange model that I built in the greenhouse design tool, which is available through our course, actually will design a really good system because it uses basic fan laws, which is really important for distributing air effectively through these systems. And so these big pipes right here are going to act as the manifolds. So all the air is going to come into one of these and it's going to leave out of one of these. And so this is a 10 inch diameter uh, water pipe. I think they're about $350 each. They come in 14 foot lengths. And, um, and then they're, it's going to get accumulated in another one of these on the other side of the greenhouse. And we're actually going to use uh, perforated weeping tile. Now I was pretty skeptical about this. I didn't think that these would be a good pipe for conveying air because there's an enormous amount of friction in these pipes but we actually modeled it based upon uh, 10 CFM per pipe going through this system. And based upon some kind of rule of thumb stuff for me, I figured these pipes can handle between 10 and 20 CFM kind of at the max. And so that gives you a clue as to how big your fan is gonna be based upon the number of pipes that you connect between these manifolds. And so that'll make more sense as we're actually in the ground building these things. Um, a lot of the systems that I see on YouTube don't really understand how air moves and how to properly distribute it through systems. And then the other thing that we're going to do, which actually adds a lot of cost, I'm just looking for this part right now. Can you grab one of those um, connectors? So what I see a lot of guys doing is they take this weeping tile here and they drill, put a hole saw hole through here, and then they just shove the pipe in. And so you can imagine that as the as you go across the uh, manifold here, that you've got some pipes coming in two inches, some coming in one inch, some coming in four inches, and that change in um, distance that the that the pipe goes in will actually affect the resistance before it even enters into the weeping tile. And so you can end up with lots of air going through one pipe and not much air going through another. And so these guys are quite expensive; they're like six bucks each. And so you can imagine, I've got a hundred of these, so there's $600 worth of these parts uh, in this system. Um, and so because we're, we're using these because there's a flange on here, you can see right there. And so once we get the right diameter in here, we're going to be able to stick this in and every single pipe is going to be into the manifold in a uniform way. So there's the, everyone's going to have the same um, entry losses. And then on the other side, everyone's going to have the same exit losses. And so it's really important. One of the reasons that, hey, bud, shh, the camera's going to pick you up there. Rowan's watching. So here, do you want to come say hi? Sure. All right. Do some math. So one of our helpers today is going to be Mr. Rowan. And so he gets to be part of this. He's going to enjoy what goes on in the actual greenhouse itself. You want to sit up on the pipes? Sure. All right, so what I was saying is that each, um, both the entry and the exit manifolds are going to uh, have the same losses, which is important because when you're building an air system, you want to have equal distribution of air, which is going to mean that we have equal distribution of energy going through uh, the ground. And the goal here is to store as much energy in the earth as possible. Um, Mitch is going to be writing a white paper on some of the findings that we've got and so that will be coming out on our website sometime in the future. Um, and there's actually a lot of learnings that came out of this. I thought these systems were diurnal, meaning that they only stored energy from one day to the next or one day to the night. Like overnight? Yep, so the energy that gets stored through the day gets released at night. But it turns out we have a seasonal effect on these, so we're actually able to move energy from one quarter into another quarter. Um, that's what the so model it's like showed. pretty slow moving. It's slow moving. It's slow in and it's slow out, yeah. which is great because uh, you're doing some math. He's figuring it all out. <laughs> he's got the, uh, what's that uh, Dilbert com uh, comic? Uh, he's got the knack. I have no idea. Oh, there's like mom takes his little boy to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh, I'm really sorry. Um, I've got really bad news for you. And she's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, oh, she, your son's got the knack. And she's like, what does that mean? He's like, Fortunately, he's going to be an engineer. 
It's in your blood. <laughs> it's in your blood. Anyhow, uh, so there's seasonal effects going on in here, which was not something I expected. So that's really neat. So I think there's an opportunity to improve upon that. The other thing we found out is, is we're going to install a transpired collector on here, which means a, we're going to put a solar air heater on the back of the wall of the greenhouse. So when the sun is lowest in the sky, it's going to hit a piece of dark material, which is going to heat up. And then the air that we suck from the greenhouse is going to go through that transpired collector and underground. That had a huge impact on the overall efficiency. And then the other interesting thing was that it turns out that longer pipes between manifolds is better than shorter pipes. Um, and there are a few other learnings as well. But as we build this and then study it through the winter, that our design process is going to improve and we're going to uh, include those optimizations in the, the greenhouse design tool, which I'll leave a link to in the show notes below. So you can actually download that Excel tool if you want to learn how to design these systems uh, and all the components in a greenhouse. So let's uh, move the pipes. Yeah, let's get to it. And we'll get them over there and then we'll start getting set up to cutting holes in here. You're gonna be cutting like 50 holes in this today. So the first thing we're gonna do is lay out all the holes and then from there, yeah. I did the math. Yeah, what's the math? To get a hundred, to get a hundred um, of these, yeah. you have to have 30, 30, and 40. Oh, oh yeah, you've got, so, you, so actually that's really good math, but we're only gonna have two manifolds. Mm -hmm. which means that all the pipes are going to come from one manifold and they're going to go to another manifold. So it means that we're going to have 50 on this pipe and we're going to have 50 on this pipe. And then the pipes mm -hmm. are going to connect them together. And then the third pipe, so Rowan has tried to figure out how many of these are going to go into each of the pipes. And he's done the math on it, which is great. He's got the knack. <laughs> the third pipe that you see here, so we've got manifold, manifold, and then there's a third pipe that's going to actually act as our intake. So we have to bring the intake up on the back wall um, and it's going to go up higher than the outlet on the other side because it wants to pull from the hottest air. So we'll go through all those details as we as we build it. Great math row. Um, so we're going to pull the pipes off and we're going to lay all this out with pens and then uh, I've got a, a big drill to pour these out and I'm hoping that Mitch's biceps are feeling strong today because uh, this thing puts a lot of torque out and because we're going to be cutting with a four inch hole saw, it actually puts a lot of torque on your body and you got to be really careful how you're cutting this. So we'll see how that works and hopefully there aren't any gross blooper rolls at the end. Or me spinning around in that, a circle that, and not actually cutting anything. That's what I mean, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully you had your Wheaties this morning. Your, your glyphosate, not yet. Your glyphosate free Wheaties. I had a coffee for breakfast. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so these pipes come with bell ends and we bought caps to seal off one side and we're gonna have an elbow on the other side. Can you grab that elbow for me, Mitch? So even though this is not what you would call um, a long radius elbow, this is a short radius elbow, uh, it's gonna do a really good job helping keep uh, air movement smooth. Air is a funny beast. Um, it's compressible, unlike liquid, like, like water. Um, and so you really have to reduce friction wherever you can. There's not a lot of, it's not like a pump where you can have uh, huge amounts of head pressure, or at least there, you don't have the same ability as you do with a pump as you do with an air or a fan. So we have to re reduce friction wherever we can. And so typically in an HVAC system, we would use a much uh, smoother radius, but we're really not moving that much air through this system. So we're gonna cut the bell end off so that we can put a cap on one side. Um, realistically, if you wanted to, you could probably, it'd probably be cheaper actually. You could just build a, a plywood plug in here. That would probably work perfectly fine. Um, this cap is quite expensive, but it just makes it um, fast, I guess. So one cut and then I can put a cap on there. It's sealed, um, which is kind of nice. And then uh, the elbow though, I think would be a little bit harder to fabricate just using <laughs> plywood. So we're definitely gonna use this. This guy here was 328 bucks. Um, so, you know, it does add up pretty quick. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to thermodynamically model this is because when you add up the cost of all these materials, it starts um, getting pretty pricey. Anyways, we were we we're gonna cut this bell end off and then Mitch is gonna go 
across here and he's actually going to lay out all the different pipe holes that he's going to cut. Once those are laid out, he's going to do it on both pipes. And then we are going to start laying it out inside the greenhouse. Okay, now if you can lift that up, I'm just going to put that on like so. I think I have to get a hammer to hammer that on. I think there's um, a rubber mallet in the garage. Yeah. If you want to just grab that. Okay, so we're going to just hit this on. Okay. That's good. Let's turn this pipe around and we'll cut the end off this. Oh, close, but not quite. But there's going to be a cap on there, so I'm not too worried. Okay, come on the other side of me, Ro. That's good. Down. Okay, lift it up again now. Okay, good. Definitely don't want to break this one. Okay. Got pretty square on there. Yeah, I got about it. An inch. Okay, so there's the the intake manifold that's pretty much complete we just need to put the marks in here so we're gonna rotate this this way this is gonna go to the back of the greenhouse so then our pipe holes are gonna go in this aspect and uh, we'll put the other elbow on afterwards and so now Mitch is gonna lay this all out sorry now Mitch is gonna lay this all out and we're gonna start drilling out these holes Okay, so I tried using the hole saw to cut through this SDR material and it is really hard and uh, with the four inch hole saw this thing flipped around and uh, totally walloped my leg. I don't know if you can see that there. Here, right there. Ooh, it's really, really hurts. So I'm going to try another technique. Um, I have used hole saws for this stuff before but because of the hardness of the material um, we're gonna draw a circle around the hole that we wanna cut and then we're gonna try a jigsaw. It won't be quite as pretty, but you know what? You're not gonna see this under three feet of, um, of soil and uh, it'll be a lot less dangerous. If you've ever used a hole saw uh, with a really good drill, they literally can break your arm if you're not uh, strong. And while um, Mitch has got uh, pipes of steel, um, <laughs> I don't, don't wanna subject him to that unless I have to. So we're going to try the jigsaw method here shortly. We're just finishing laying these pipes out here. So let's give this a shot. So, Swiss cheese. It's one way to spend an afternoon. Yeah. So how long did it take to do each of these holes? Uh, each of the holes? Yeah. Um, you mean like cumulatively or? Uh, no, no, like each hole, like, um, like 30 seconds, a minute? Yeah, 30, min 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah. Depending on how tangled the cord was. And, and we're going to make green belt buckles. Yeah, I got my green belt today. Nice, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so now we got this all sorted. And so we're going to um, put one row in on each of the pipes. And then we're going to tape the top of the holes. And the reason we want to do that is that we only want to backfill with one tier of pipes on it. And, uh, and then as soon as that's backfilled, um, then we'll put the other row on. But when we're backfilling, we don't want this filling up with soil, which is why we're going to duct tape one row of them. And that'll keep the soil out of it. So the next thing we can do is stick 
we'll choose the right one. Um, so on this one over here, we're going to put all the ones down on this row. And on that one over there, it'll be the opposite. Well, the bottom one, basically. So we're going to stick these black guys in next, and then we'll lower the pipe in and get it in position. Cool. All right. So here we have the two completed manifolds and you can see the connectors sticking out of those manifolds which are going to connect into the weeping tile uh, in order to convey the air from one side of the greenhouse to the next. Check out the next video or stay tuned to the channel when the next video comes out and we'll show how those two manifolds get installed as well as connected from one side to the other using that same weeping tile.